Before you 3D print any helmets or armor, the most important thing is that they're scaled correctly. Any parts you print that are too large or too small are just a waste of your time and filament. Today I will show you an updated tool that you can 3D print and the methods you need to make sure that everything you print is the perfect size. Six months ago I modified this existing tool to make it even easier to measure your head to properly scale your 3D printed helmets. People loved it, but I was also asked to make a larger one for 3D printed armor. Uh, so let's get started. This is the original cosplay caliper by Uncle Jesse. You use it to measure your head, but then you need to measure it again. This is my remix file. The measurements are right on the tool, so you don't need to measure a second time, but it only measures up to 300 millimeters. That's not large enough to measure for a chest plate or other armor. So I made a bigger one that measures up to 500 millimeters. It prints in three pieces and it's very easy to assemble. Just snap the plug into the top, then flip it around and snap in the bottom. So with this tool, you can now get measurements very easily. But then what do you do with these measurements and how do you apply it to 3D printed parts? Well, first you need some reference models to resize to represent your size and shape. One option is to use a $40 program called Armorsmith. What I did instead was just look for free files online to use as references. For helmets, I like to use these sizing heads by Budwin. I measure from side to side, front to back, and top to bottom. Then apply those measurements to the head sizing file in my slicer. Then I can add the helmet and size it accordingly. Be sure to add some extra space if you plan on adding padding. I spent a lot of time looking for something for the armor. I did find this dummy 13 file from Sousaphone, but then I got sidetracked and I had to print one out. It does help that it has separate parts and I can just use and resize the part that I need for reference. The only issue I had with using this is that the parts are very blocky and not rounded. Luckily this model is very popular and just about everybody's added their own remixes. I found this smooth option which will work much better. I'm going to print this Stormtrooper chest plate, so I will use the Dummy 13 chest piece to resize it for reference. I'll increase the size to start with. And when resizing, make sure that uniform scale is not checked. You need to change each dimension independently. So first I measure left to right. Then I apply it in the slicer. Then I measure front to back. Then apply here. And last is top to bottom. And resize here. Now I have a good reference point to size my armor to. Plus you can save the updated sized files for future prints. I add in the chest piece. It looks a bit small, so I'll increase the size to 110%. And I also make sure to change it back to uniform scale. I don't want to distort the parts if I don't need to. This looks like a good fit. Since I'm happy with the size, I can remove the chest template. Another trick before printing the whole part is just to print a slice of it. I can use the cut tool in the slicer and cut it down here at the bottom so I have a flat print surface. Then I'll add a second cut here. This print takes less than 30 minutes and it's only about 10 grams of filament. Then I use this to make sure that the size is correct. And that looks like a good fit. Now in case you were thinking these calipers are too big for your printer, I did make a second option. I also made files that were split in two and snapped together easily to fit on a printer with a 256 by 256 millimeter print plate. The three piece calipers are large, so I needed to print them on my Anycubic Cobra 3 Max. This printer has a 420 by 420 millimeter print plate, so the caliper fits easily on the printer. I do want to thank Anycubic for sponsoring this video by providing the printer. It's perfect for making large prints, plus it can print four colors if you add the Ace Pro and up to eight if you get two. A couple other features I want to mention are the automatic leveling and the quick change nozzle. I do wish it came with the printer, but I highly recommend getting the camera as well. I ended up buying one myself because especially for long prints, I like to be able to check the print on my phone when I'm not near the printer. Plus the camera is needed for the AI spaghetti detection. Your app will notify you or pause the print when it detects a faulty print. Overall, I really like this printer. Be sure to check out my full review where I go over the good, the bad, and the weird. Now let's get back to the armor. Since this is such a tall print, I want to paint on manual supports, which can be done in the Anycubic slicer or whichever slicer you like to use. Just set the supports to manual, click on supports painting on the top toolbar, and just paint where you want the supports to be. I add them to the entire bottom. Plus I add some spots up higher for added support to make sure the part doesn't wobble while printing. Now I slice and print. 
Here it is at just over four hours. And here it's almost halfway done at 13 hours. And here at 20 hours. It's almost done now and the print's looking great. With the added supports, the print's very stable even at these higher layers. The print's done now and now I just need to remove the supports. Looks like a perfect fit. Be sure to download my calipers with the link in the description. I also added an affiliate link for the Cobra 3 Max if you want to check that out as well. You can use these same steps for any piece of armor, whether it's a helmet, for your chest, or your arms or legs. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and check this out next. Thank you for watching.